Hey everyone, today we're doing something a little different and more fun today, depending on how you define fun. We're doing a tutorial on how to draw this pumpkin using only math equations in the spirit of Halloween. Before we get started, press the like button below and subscribe for more math videos and tutorials. Let's go. I first just want to overlay my image with the graph so it lines up nicely, and I'm trying to work with as many whole numbers in the coordinates as possible. Once we have things mostly lined up and scaled, we can start with our first step. As I mentioned, the first thing we'll do is find the shape, then identify the specific points on the graph. The outline of the pumpkin initially looked like parabolas to me, then I tried it and they were definitely not parabolas. So after seeing that, I realized the shape is much more round and fits more like an ellipse. To write the equation of an ellipse, you need the center point or middle of the ellipse and two radii, which is the distance from the center to the outline. So I'll write down the points here. I also noticed that the two other sections of the pumpkin are the same exact ellipse, but just shifted to the right by two, which will make our next step a lot easier. I know the middle section of the pumpkin is a little smaller, but I made them the same for simplicity. Now that we have our points, this is the general equation for an ellipse. So for ellipse on the left, our center point is negative two, zero. The horizontal radius is three and the vertical radius is four. Since we have all the information we need, we can actually just plug these numbers into the formula here. And this is the equation for our first ellipse. Pretty easy, right? The next thing is to find the domain because it's not the full ellipse, it's only part of it. The graph cuts off right around here where x equals 1, so we also have to indicate the domain. Like I said, the next two ellipses, ellipses are the same shape and values, but all of the x's are shifted over by 2. You can go through the same entire process we did on the first ellipse, or just replace the h value, which I'm just going to do here. It's easier and gets the job done because everything else about the ellipse is the same. Again, since this isn't the full ellipse, we have to include that the drawing only has these top and bottom parts where the y's are in a certain range. Then do the same for the third ellipse and here you go. This is the main outline of our pumpkin. Here we're doing the same process with the stem. Not sure why they didn't make it symmetrical, but I'm going to make it symmetrical. The sides have a little curve to them that look like a parabola where the vertex is the bottom of the stem. In order to write out the equation of a parabola, we'll use vertex form where hk is the vertex. But you'll notice that there's this a value that we still need to find. In order to find A, we'll substitute HK and any other point on the graph as XY. Then we'll just solve for the variable A like any other equation. And once we have our A value, to get the equation of the actual parabola, we just need to plug in HK and A. And that's our equation that we'll plug into Desmos. For the other side of the stem, we can actually use the same equation, but since it's reflected where everything is the same except the x values are flipped, we can just change the sign in front of the x in the equation and obviously update the domain. Finally, the top is just a horizontal line, y equals 6.5. And again, we'll add in the domain. When we graph it, I feel like the stem really makes a difference, and now you can actually tell it's a pumpkin. Alright, for the eyes. They have this weird curve to them, but they mainly look like triangles to me, so I'm thinking we just use linear equations between these three dots here. And for the other eye, they're literally the same points, but again, the signs of the x values are flipped, so that'll be pretty easy. 
When we're finding the equation, it'll be easiest to use point slope form because you can directly plug in the point and the slope, which we already know from the graph. Let's just do one line together. For the point, you can choose any point on the line. I'll just pick negative 2.5, 1. Then from the graph, we can figure out the slope, which is rise over run. Starting at our original point, in order to get to our second point, negative 1.5, 2, we need to rise up by 1 and run to the right by 1. So our slope is actually just 1. We can plug these numbers into the formula above and get our equation. Again, we have to restrict the domain because we're not using the full line. We're only using the stuff between negative 2.5 and negative 1.5. And we'll do the same for the other two lines to make up the full left eye. And like I said before, the other eye is just the same as this one, except the x values are negative. Now for graphing, I'll type everything in. And for the right eye, like I mentioned, I'm just going to put a negative in front of the x and obviously update the domains. There we have it, we're so close. Finally, we have our mouth. We've already done parabolas and lines in the previous sections, so I'll just fast forward through this. But basically, I used two parabolas for the mouth and vertical and horizontal lines for the tooth. Using vertex form, I got the equations for the mouth and defined the vertical and horizontal lines. If you want, you can also break up the domain in the top where the tooth is. It looked a little awkward at first, so I did a second one, but now it looks even more awkward. But yeah, this is the final result I got. Let me know in the comments what you guys are doing for Halloween. Maybe your plans are more fun than making a pumpkin out of equations. But anyways, happy Halloween and see you all in the next video.